Hello again, and in this episode we're looking at beginner exercises once again, and this is level 4. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk, where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels, and all the courses are free. And these are exercises to help improve and practice your Blender skills. So hopefully you've looked at lots of the beginner tutorials, and you're ready to develop your skills. There's five different shapes this time, three sort of warm-up shapes, and two more complicated shapes at the end. So I'll spend a little bit longer on the last two more advanced shapes. Okay, as usual, I'll show you the shape. I might give you a clue and then pause the video and have a go. Okay, so here's the first shape. I'll give you a slight hint here. Scale Shift Z, or Z, depending on which part of the globe you're from. Okay, have a go at that. So how did I make this? Let's add a cube, Shift A, Mesh Cube. And I'll just pull that up into position, roughly around there and into edit mode with tab then control tab to get this menu and I can select the faces I can E to extrude and scale and E to extrude or the same tool which is I it's the same as E to extrude then scale I is the inset tool and E to extrude and pull it down so I've got the basic shape there and then I can add a loop cut down here with control R loop cut control R loop cut and I'm double left clicking each time so it goes right in the center if I don't double left click I'll just quickly do that again control R to loop cut click once and I can move it but I don't want it to go anywhere except the center so if I right click now it will go back into the center to select a loop cut we press alt right click so I can select different loop cuts and if I want to select multiple loop cuts it's shift alt right click and at this point I just need to scale and this is where shift Z comes in so I want to scale but not in the Z axis and there we go I've got this odd looking shape okay let's have a look at the next one I won't give you any clues this time this should be fairly straightforward have a go at that okay so how did I make this let's shift A and add a cylinder next to it so I did start with a cylinder and I brought the vertices down to 8 if you got roughly 8 that's fine let's bring that up scale it down shift Z in fact I need to bring it down again now and into edit mode with tab then control tab to get my select mode menu click the face E to extrude and then pull it up scale it in E to extrude and then scale it out E to extrude scale it in and it's roughly the same shape although it's a bit bigger and the last bit I E to extruded <laughs> E to extruded E to extrude and pulled it up in the Z axis and just did a loop cut there and I did two and then scaled them out so it looks like a ball at the top it's kind of like a Christmas tree I was thinking about the chess piece which we recently did okay so nice and easy so let's look at the next one okay you can use the shape you've just made we've got to try and make something similar to this and your tip for this is to remember that the closer the loop cuts are in subdivision surfaces the tighter the edges okay have a go at that Right, so how did I do this? I'm just going to grab my shape from the other layer. Well, I'll pick this one. So Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to move that with M to layer three. And then I'm going to go to layer three where my shape is. Saves me building it again. Okay, so I'll add my subdivision surface modifier. You can go up here to the modifiers, or you can press Control three or two or four or whatever it might be. That will change the views. I'm also going to smooth it out. And you end up with this sort of blobby shape like this. So we need to sharpen up those edges so I go to tab into edit mode and press Control R to do some more loop cuts and if I bring my loop cuts close together it makes the edges sharper so there we go and I think I put one down at the bottom to sort of stabilize it and one at the top here okay so that's how you sort of sharpen these edges and we've got sort of very similar looking thing there you may need to select your edge loop at the bottom and do an inset as well that's the first three, so the next couple are a bit more complicated. Let's have a look at the next one. And you can see the modifiers I've got there as well. That can be your tip. Have a go at that. Okay, so at first glance, this looks fairly complicated. I'll create a plane next to it. I scaled that in the Y. And let's just make sure they're both together by going to side view and pulling them down. There we go. Scale it a bit more. And then I did a mirror down the middle. The easiest way to do that is with the auto mirror add-on and I've got it in the Y axis, so I'm mirroring across there, auto mirror, 
and it's created the mirror. That's great. So let's build the basic shape. So control R to do a loop cut there and another one around there and two loop cuts here. So I can use my wheel for this and my one's a tiny bit wider so I can scale that in the X and it will move those across slightly. Then with control tab, I can select my face mode and just extrude that upwards. Now this isn't the best topology and I'll explain why later on, but for now just get used to using subdivision surfaces, mirrors and making these sort of shapes. So I'll extrude that up again. I'll grab this face in here and extrude that out and pop them together. Now you can see clippings turned on, so they will stick together and they won't move away now. But also I've got an extra face in the middle. If I go to wireframe mode, you can see it there and I need to delete that face. Back to solid mode, I press Z for that. You can change it down here as well, of course. And I've got my basic shape. I have got some thickness here as well. So I can select the edges around here and extrude those out in the Z axis. So there's the shape. Now if I add my subdivision surface modifier just here, we get this shape. Let's bring the views up a bit to about three and set it to smooth shading in object mode. Although this one wasn't set to smooth shading. But we see we've got a similar shape. And the only thing I did to change mine was to select this loop cut here, pull it up, and I just pulled this in slightly to give it a, a curve and we've got a very similar shape now. But you can see these edges are slightly sharper. So to sharpen an edge up, I can do a loop cut here. Now if I wanted it really sharp, I'd want a loop cut going around here. So what I could do is control R, do a loop cut there, do a loop cut there, another one here, and then I've sort of created a loop cut around the outside. But that's not very good topology. What would have been better if I duplicate this shape quickly, Shift D to duplicate and pull it over here, and I'm just going to delete a few faces. Full stop on the numpad will zoom me into what I have selected. And I'm just going to select these face loops here. You can select a face loop with Alt right click and I'll delete those for now. And lastly, I'll fill in this face. You can select two edges and press F to fill in a face. What I should have done is pressed I to inset and then extruded that. That way I have this area here where I can, if I want to sharpen things up, add a loop cut. So when you're going to extrude edges like this, it's a good idea if you're in subdivision surface mode to do a quick inset. That will give you good topology to work with. Okay, so the last one is this one here. Okay, now this hasn't got good topology, so just practice the shape first, and then we'll go about improving the topology secondly. If you feel confident though, you can try making it with good topology. Just quickly smooth it out. This time you can't, however, use the mirror tool. So you've got to think how you can join in here. And the tip is bridge edge loops. Okay, have a go at that. Okay, so how did I make this? Let's add a cylinder. And I'm going to keep it low, about eight, because I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, which will add more topology and more curves like this anyway. Let's just bring it into position next to the other one and scale it up just a touch. There we go. So into edit mode with tab into face mode, control tab to get this menu, face mode, and inset or extrude and scale the top face, and then extrude it in like this for the cup shape. Let's just go to wireframe mode, side view, orthographic to pull it down to about this level. And you can see my cup's a bit poor there. I should have smartened that up a bit. Okay, back to perspective and solid mode. So to create the handle, I'll have mine sticking out this way so we can see it. I control R for loop cuts and I created four loop cuts. And I'm just going to duplicate this shape so I can come back to this point and show about the topology. So into edit mode, shift D to duplicate and move that across over here. So if I'm doing the bad topology, I can select these two, extrude out, extrude again, and then these two faces here I need to join together. So I press control E bridge edge loops just here. Control E is the edge menu. You can also find that under mesh and then edges and then bridge edge loops. Control E is a much simpler way of getting there though. Now when I add my subdivision surface modifier and up the views, it's looking similar and I just need to sharpen up some edges. So let's go into edit mode, sharpen up some edges here 
and here, perhaps one at the top, one at the bottom. Select this edge loop, I to inset, and really I should have one inside here as well, Control R, and then I've got in wireframe mode a better internal area of the mug. But I can't sharpen up this edge very well because I haven't done it the correct way. So let's go to this one, back into edit mode, select those two faces, there and there, and this time I want to inset. This is where the inset tool is really important to use rather than extrude and scale. If I right click and undo that, just to make sure there was no extrusion, if I press E, right click and S, they come together and you have to set the scale by individual points, which is a bit of a pain. So much better just to go I and inset. That way now we can extrude, pull it out, extrude again, select these two faces, control E for the edge menu, and then bridge edge loops. And there we go. Now the subdivision surface modifier with control four, so four subdivisions. And I'll just smarten up the edges around here and the internal edge here. But now I have got a bit more control around these areas here. Now you might be thinking this isn't particularly mug shaped at the moment, but would need to add a bit more topology around the place and smooth around these edges and things. That's not the aim of this exercise. It's just to teach you about the topology for the moment. And this is the correct way of extruding. We can select this edge loop and pull it out and create some sort of smoother mug if we wanted to. But there's a fair bit we'd have to do to smarten that up. But for now, we're just practicing those basic tools, bridge edge loops and understanding basic topology. OK, so that's the end of this level. Hopefully you're finding these exercises useful. Do let me know in the comments of anything you'd like me to add. Or if you're happy with the pace or unhappy with the pace, just let me know so that I can edit the future episodes. And do remember there's a Discord server if you get stuck with these things and you can discuss with all the lovely people on there and show off your artwork and ask any questions. Thanks for watching.